when thinking about whose journey I wanted to travel with you tonight on, I came across one that's very important to all of us in this community. The disengaged, disheartened, the disappointed, the unemployed, the underemployed, the person looking to take their first step, the career launcher, or the career advancer. Ten years, been doing the same thing, did everything right, did everything they were told to do, and still laid off the job seeker. So what's on their mind? What's their question tonight when they're preparing for their interview tomorrow? You know that question, the one no matter how much you prepare for, that question that keeps you up at night, the question you should know everything about, but you still don't feel prepared. What is that question? Do you know? Tell me about yourself. Usually it goes something like this. Well, I'm not synergist, synergistic, people person, I'm the team player, I'm the first one at the office, I'm the last one to leave, I'm the hardest working person you'll ever meet, I'm the person that's going to get things done. I'm going to use my superpowers of multitasking to get the job done with passion. Now that word passion is very important, we'll get back to that in a second. But let me tell you a little bit about myself. What makes me uniquely qualified to talk about this topic is that since high school, I've had to deal with the idea of technology fixing its way and finding its way in every industry I've been a part of. My first stop was in the military, eight years in the Marine Corps. We had to learn how to fight differently, how to do things differently because the enemy was changing. It was not a force that we had prepared for in the past, and we had to use new tools. Then I, after eight years of doing that, I got into the world of finance. And finance, as they are currently dealing with, the online tools, the idea that the customer can have access to everything more cost effective than anybody else, that is something that they have to still figure out. And then I got into the world of workforce development and education. And the students and the job seekers, this is how they see the new economy, this beast picking up all the money, taking all the jobs, technologically focused and leaving the people behind. This is not an image that I see of this economy, but it's one that I know is on their mind. So what do we do different? How do we compete? What's my first step? Where's my place? These are the things on the job seeker's mind. There's a book by Martin Ford called Rise of the Robots, and it talks about this bleak position that we're in in our economy. It says this time is different. Those jobs, those menial tasks, the ones that are repetitive, the ones you can predict, those jobs are going away. Not just the lower levels, not just the jobs you expect to disappear, the higher levels, the high functional, the ones you go to college to learn how to do, those are also under siege as well. So Martin Ford puts this image out there and says, what are we going to do different? Because there's, there are some changes that happen with this economy that didn't happen the last time we went through something similar, which was the transition from the agriculture world, where 90% of us were in agriculture, to where we're at now, where we're able to produce food that's low cost, good for you, and able to feed the world. We did it before, right? We were able to transition before, so we can do it again. Well, this is different. Since 1973, the year before I was born, production has increased, but pay has lagged behind. A lot of those jobs that were there to replace have not yet developed on their own, and people are having to go out and find their own way, find their own opportunities. So it's a little different now. This chart shows you that the new job opportunities since 2010 to 2016 were mostly in the higher tech-focused industries. Not just the number of jobs, but the pay. This report from Brookings Institute shows that an average of $75,000 a year can be expected if you have a higher technology-based job. That's encouraging. That's important to know. But also know that in that same chart, this family that's being led by the industries that are lower, non-technological-based jobs, that income's at $30,000. How can you pay the bills at that level? Even in cost-effective communities like ours, that's still a challenge. So there's something 
that needs to be said about this and something needs to be done about this. And in that same report, they listed the five lowest cities in terms of technology, current technology that they enjoy, and the type of jobs that are involved in technology. And wouldn't you know it, our city is in the bottom five. This report from a different data source, Department of Labor, has us listed as the number one city in the country at risk of losing jobs to automation in 2016. It's encouraging that we're not the top community on this list anymore. We've gone down eight positions, which is a good sign that things are changing. But the point is, is the only city in 2016 above 15%, above 50%, that's a concern. And that means this is important to all of us, not just those that are programmers and web designers and those in the middle and the higher echelon, but you still have people that you share this community with. How do we get more people involved? How do we get more awareness out there? So the Proteus problem is this. General, the general that led the forces in Afghanistan, in Iraq, this general, he talked about the fact that we have to learn how to operate as a team. And one such story he shared goes from Greek mythology. The Proteus is a sea creature that comes up from the ocean and attacks in many different ways. It attacks with its claws. It comes down like an eagle, like a snake, like a dragon, totally overwhelming its victim because they don't know how to respond. They're overwhelmed with too many choices and too many things that they have to learn how to do. Well, General McChrystal says that the way to make sure that you're prepared is to understand your tools that worked before may not work right now. Develop new ones. Your tactics may not work anymore. Develop new ones. And work as a team. Because as a team, we'll be able to break through, be competitive, and work off each other's energy. So the way I recommend we move forward, because in a new world, you need new rules. You need new strategies. You need new tools. We start by building shields. Shields that protect our future, future-proof our career paths. Then we get amped, get excited. This is not a depressing time. We have low unemployment rates. We have new jobs being created, new opportunities, and new technologies are also supported by new strategies. Be excited about that. And slay bots. Calm down. I'm not saying destroy the robots. They have a place. But that robot that's being designed by a technician to replace your job, don't be there when it gets there. Be somewhere else. Be better. Be faster. Be equipped. Be ready. And don't be surprised. So we have a new system of stackable education, of tracking where we've been through badges and certificates and diplomas and education. That's great. It shows us what we've done. But one thing we learn in the military, we value medals, we value ribbons, because we like to put other people and appreciate what they've done. But when it comes to battle, there are no ribbons in the battlefield. All we have are defenses. So as you can see right here, these Marines are set in place. When they first go to a position, they dig holes, they dig in, they put the concertina wire out, they have interlocking fire, they know where everybody's at. There's no badges, but there are walls, there are protections, and there are shields. That's what we need to build, shields. Build ourselves and defend each other for the opportunities that are in front of us. When you have a shield, you not only protect yourself, you protect the people around you. A testudo is a formation that was developed by the Roman Empire. And they used this formation, this group of soldiers locked in, shield by shield by shield. Testudo means tortoise. Like a tortoise, these interlocking shields protect the turtle, right? And together, they drive, they keep their position, they hold the line, and they keep moving forward. That's the secret. Build together, build your shields, and keep moving forward together. That's how we're going to get where we want to get. This is Prometheus. Prometheus is known as the maker of man. He that put us together through clay in Greek mythology. 
And one thing that he did is he constantly challenged the status quo. He was one of the first disruptors. He made things happen. He created the light and brought it down as fire to humans. He gives us these gifts so that we can use them, so that we can use them to become better people. We'll get back to him later. Now, it's, it's hard at first, doing something new, doing something different. You're awkward. You feel like you're an imposter. You're a wannabe. But you got to start right there. And you get busy, and you get active, and you become a busy bee. And once you convince yourself that you're in this, and this is real, and the activity you're doing is going to move you somewhere, then you're going to be, because you believe it. You convince yourself. If you can't convince yourself first, you're not going to convince anybody else. So you're going to be now. And once you go from going to be to need to be, now you're beast mode. And now you're ready to get things done and get where you need to go. What do I do? You say get active, Xavier. That's great. But what is this new economy expected of me? Well, it's no secret. Just Google it. Top 10 things employers are looking for. You can go five pages deep. You can go many reports in from many different demographics, and it'll tell you the same thing. Teamwork, people skills, figuring out how to get things done. Let me simplify it for you. Do the things robots can't, and you won't be replaced. This list is attainable. All of us can do it, and that's where we need to get active. That's how we're able to build our shields. And get motivated. Nisky wrote a book, Will to Power. And in there, I read a chapter on will because we often say these are weak-willed people or strong-willed people. I'm not one of them. He says there's no such thing as will. You either have a plan or you don't. And when you have a plan, you have the energy gravitate to you and things open up and opportunities are created because you have a plan. So start with your motive. If you don't know why you're doing it, when it becomes hard, you're going to forget and you're not going to work as hard. Start with your motive. Then get passionate. Now, passion is a word we like to often overuse in the career advancing industry. Follow your passion, we say. Move on your passion. Make your passion your paycheck. And a lot of us use passion as something we like, something we enjoy. We feel a love towards it. It's something that makes us feel good. But the original meaning of passion is sacrifice. So let me ask you this. What are you willing to sacrifice for what you believe in? The movie that we know and associate with the word passion is the passion of Christ. He wasn't doing what he did because it felt good. He was doing what he did because he loved who he did it for. And he knew what he was doing it for. That's the meaning of passion, sacrifice. So we, we start by redefining the word passion, understanding its sacrifice, understanding that we need to find what our passion is by understanding what we're willing to sacrifice for. Because developing those shields is hard work. The Triple Revolution. This is something Martin Luther King spoke of on his last sermon. The sermon at the church in Washington, D.C. that he would days later be memorialized and people would come and see his coffin. The last thing he talked about was not sleeping through the revolution. The Triple Revolution is this. First, civil rights. We know him for what he's done in civil rights and how he's helped us be a community well-connected because of our equality. And he realized that he wasn't quite there yet. More work had to be done, and we still march to this day to help that get done. The other revolution was war. At the time, we were spending $500,000 on military assets to kill a single North Vietnamese and putting $50 in the pockets of the needy and hungry in our own country. So that was a problem. We still march upon it to this very day. Now the revolution you, ha you hardly ever hear of is automation and cybernation. He spoke about this before we had the home computer. He spoke about this before we even knew how the internet worked. He knew that this was gonna be a problem. He says this new technology is so amazing. It's allowed us to do so much and create leisure. It's allowed us to become a community the world has become a community, but we forgot what it is to be a brotherhood. This was an issue. 
And he told his people on that day, don't sleep through the revolution. So I ask you, I challenge you, build your shields, find your passion. Don't sleep through the revolution and keep moving forward. Thank you.